Hi, my name is Guy Bartram. I'm a Director of Product Marketing at VMware in our Cloud Services Business Unit. And today I'm joined by Simon Hansford, the CEO of UK Cloud, and we're here to talk about your Sovereign Cloud initiative. Good to be here. Simon, can you tell us a little bit about UK Cloud and your overall business? Yes, so alongside the global hyperscalers, we're uh, one of a handful of cloud providers, strategic cloud providers to UK government. Uh, today, every single government department uses our platform alongside 300 plus partners who deliver, at times, mission critical, national critical applications back into the UK public sector. Uh, we go to market in three brands. Um, UK Cloud, think central or in the United States, we'd call that federal government. UK Cloud X, which is defense and national security and UK Cloud Health, which is the National Health Service in the UK, life sciences and pharma businesses. So three district think brands, each with very unique data uh, classification sovereignty requirements. So there are some fairly specific requirements around data sovereignty and control and jurisdiction for a sovereign cloud. Can you tell us a little bit about UK Cloud's approach to these? So again, in our market, which is the UK public sector, you know, the specific areas where sovereignty is very important, knowing that the data always resides in the UK, mm -hmm. okay? and that there's no opportunity for that data to be backed up or managed in any manner outside of the sovereign nation. Um, data is clearly important, and data is handled in the public sector in different ways. We have a classification system from official all the way through to top secret. And clearly how that ha data is handled, not only in a sovereign location manner, but also about the type of people that need to manage that data. And so again, depending on the data, we've got uh, teams of people cleared to specifically manage defence data, national security data, police data, health data, um, which needs different security clearances. And then overall, naturally, there is a big security wrap. And again, the security drives complexity, drives cost, but is a requirement depending on the data. Mm. And tell me, how has the VMware relationship evolved with UK Cloud? How, how have uh, VMware contributed to be able to help you deliver a sovereign cloud environment? I mean, as you know, it was there from day one. Yeah. Um, it was actually there, there really from a previous business that <laughs> I was involved in. Um, and that relationship has been superb. It's been from the highest level, from you know, your previous CEO to today's CEO, you know, all through you know, great local teams in the UK, but very importantly in the you know, deep engineering support teams. Certainly we've seen your platform expand, which has been great, and you're offering new services on the VMware platform. Um, but VMware isn't just the, the one single piece this platform is based on. To be a sovereign cloud, you have to have uh, other aspects that are requirements, such as you mentioned uh, ancillary things like process and certifications, uh, data center certifications, for example. Uh, but also other vendors are in the equation. Absolutely, we've, you know, we've got a complex environment and we need to integrate across vendors there. Yeah? One of the key things is we talk about multi-cloud, so you know, it's, it's not purely a VMware platform. Um, but the relationship with VM is really important. VMware is really important to us. Um, yeah, very important that it's technically capable of putting the complexity that we need to put into the systems. We need, therefore, deep engineering integration and understanding of roadmaps and feature sets. And, and clearly, I would love to deploy you know, the great features that VMware have got faster than we're capable of doing that. But you know, across a complex environment, it's hard to do. Uh, but we also great, get great sales marketing support. You know, and that's re really important that we're facing the market together, you know, hand in hand and supporting you know, solving customer problems. So Simon, let's talk about some of the customer benefits uh, for a customer using a UK uh, cloud, sovereign cloud solution over perhaps getting the service from a, hyper, a hyperscaler like Azure or um, Amazon in, um, in their country, in, outside the US perhaps. So again, first I think it's important that there is space for all of the cloud providers in the marketplace. It's not us against the global 
cloud providers, we sit alongside them and there is a place for each of us depending on the customer requirement. Yeah? Certainly where data sovereignty is important and data jurisdiction is important, a sovereign player is very, very key. Yeah? Data jurisdiction means that not only is the data locally resident, but actually legally it cannot be accessed by a third party or a foreign intelligence agency or security agency. Right. So today, as we all know, we have got a, a US Cloud Act. Mm -hmm. What that means is that data, though hosted or resident in the UK in a global hyperscaler data center, still could be requested by a US federal agency. So that's not only in the UK, but you know, globally there are uh, regions or, or countries that sovereignty, data ju jurisdiction is very important. We see that today in Europe, in GAIA-X and the French National Cloud. We see that in the Middle East. Uh, we see that out in the Far East, where again, sovereignty, jurisdiction is all important. And it's becoming more important as time goes on and as hyperscalers get a, a bigger presence in these other... Uh, absolutely, though, so, and there's many drivers to that. Yeah. One, certainly, is data and the value of data. You know, nations are understanding that data you know, will become, if it's not already, an increasing currency. Yeah. Yeah? And therefore, owning and controlling that data locally and not allowing other third parties to benefit from it becomes a national capability. And VMware um, has obviously helped with UK Cloud's journey so far. And along the lines, um, or throughout the time, a UK Cloud became a um, Cloud Verified partner of mm -hmm. VMware. How did that help uh, UK Cloud's drive more, or well, drive the sovereign initiative internally and externally? Yeah, so I think being aligned to your programs is important. You know, there's many benefits. You know, there's a very obvious sales and marketing. You, know, you become part of programs and so therefore your brand is, is exposed more. But actually there's a very important engineering design you know, as we align to best practice. Uh, but also it's two ways. You know, as much as we receive that from you, I think we're a vital part of inputting to uh, the design of how these Technologies need to be engineered, deployed, uh, managed. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so being part of the program is very important. It definitely improves our um, capability. It also uh, uh, meshes in very closely to how we can get certified you know, through other bodies, ISO, etc. Yeah. Clearly one of the benefits of the Cloud Verified program is the fact that we get a VMware validated design. Yeah. And having the knowledge that the enterprise architecture, the enterprise quality uh, level security is baked into that design and be tested and be scaled at cloud scale is very, very important to us. It takes a lot of the engineering work from, away from us, allowing us to focus on the customer and how we need to design for you know, our data classifications and ensuring that sovereignty and residency that we talk about. Yeah, but there's things that we have to do uh, outside of that. For example, at our higher level security levels, we don't just take a patch and deploy that. You know, that's got to go through a whole set of security testing and validation, even though it's been done by you, for us to deploy that onto certain platforms. Yeah, exactly. And when we look to um, the future of um, Sovereign Cloud, mm -hmm. how do you see Sovereign Clouds evolving in the future, particularly in Europe, for example? Yeah, the interest in Sovereign Cloud over the last few years has been significant. You know, we started this 10 years ago. Sovereign Cloud was absolutely baked into our proposition and our whole positioning. Yeah, as I uh, worked with our vendors and uh, appeared or uh, presented or attended you know, large conferences such as VMworld, you know, sovereignty had little understanding or relevance. You know, today that's changed significantly, uh, not only through vendor support, but very importantly, the interest in the market. 
Okay, so we see that in Europe. You know, today where you know, Europe talks about GAIA-X, their own cloud sovereign cloud initiative, that then becomes even more pointed as France have just recently announced their own national cloud. And again, this is about sovereignty and data jurisdiction. Uh, but fundamentally, it's because they recognize data is the new economy, data is the new, new oil. So it's not necessarily di driven by security concerns, but actually about building a national capability, leveraging locally for their economy, jobs, wealth, yeah. entrepreneurship. Okay. But again, we see that outside Europe as well. You know, today we look at the Middle East, uh, very fertile and a lot of interest in the need for their own sovereign cloud, because again, they want to build that national capability. Yeah. So tell me um, more about the uh, ESG, the Environment Social Governance Initiative that UK Cloud is undertaking today. So ESG has always been important to us since we founded the business. Uh, in the UK, we call that social value. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there is a, uh, an Act of Parliament called the Social Value Act, where companies need to be responsible for environment, social, responsibility. Um, actually in government procurement, uh, when government goes out to procure IT, 10% uh, of the award points need to be attributed to social value. Uh, we do that in many, many ways, whether that be you know, we're carbon uh, zero today, and clearly we've got a carbon negative plan in place. Uh, in fact, we were the first um, cloud provider globally to be carbon neutral. Uh, we've done that for the last eight years. Um, as we've talked about data sovereignty and national capability, a large part of that is about building an ecosystem and economy around your platform. Yeah, that's what's important to nations. And we do that with over 300 partners using our platform to provide services back into government. And again, there, there naturally is a, a wealth, a taxes, a skills requirement um, and capability that sits there. As a business, we've just been awarded um, called a Social Value Level 2 Award. So it's an independent marking system. We're the first technology business to have achieved Level 2. And actually one of the side benefits of that is it, uh, through an economic survey as part of that, it demonstrates that for every pound spent on our platform, 1.43 pence is actually uh, brought into the national economy. Brilliant. Those are some fantastic um, initiatives and values that you guys have achieved already. That's brilliant. They're, they're important to us. Mm. I actually think that they should be important to every company. I know they are to VMware, Great. and that's important you know, in our relationship but actually it plays back into being a national sovereign cloud provider. It's not just about having a platform or saying it's about security. It's about the wider play for the economy and the benefit of your national society, national capability. Brilliant, yeah, makes absolute sense. And I think when you look at what customers are wanting now and where customers are looking to cloud providers is for help to jumpstart there, um, in some areas of the world it's called ESG, in other words, it's sovereign, uh, uh, social values, um, to jumpstart that because by utilizing your platform, they're inheriting the carbon zero footprint, they're inheriting some of the, the social and certainly the governance and controls in your sovereign cloud. Um, so they are literally jump-starting their business. Yeah, Guy, as you know, so much of it is multi-dimensional and you can go in many, many dip different directions. You know, government departments have benefited for eight years today that along with the monthly invoice, we actually give them a carbon offset credit okay. yeah, that they can use. Yeah. Um, you know, absolutely, as, as small partners um, come onto our platform and use our platform, they use our social value uh, accreditations and capability, as well as they use our security accreditations, our 
other ISO accreditations that we're having um, as they build and develop their propositions. Well, Simon, thank you very much for talking to us today. It's been very interesting to hear how UK Cloud is leading the charge in the UK with the Sovereign Cloud Initiative and with the social values that you're instilling in your company and your customers are benefiting from. Thank you very much. Thank you for the conversation. I, as you know, I value our partnership uh, deeply. Um, I think you know, this conversation hopefully helps other cloud providers understand that there really is a strong and growing market in Sovereign Cloud, and there's an opportunity for all of us um, globally as countries see this as a capability they require. Absolutely. Thank you, Simon. Pleasure.